your average kaiju, he can only go... 50, of course. The wild line. Where's the wild line? In face. It's hard to see it. There's a pit toilet in. Oh, I can see the pit toilet in. There. You don't like storming out the pit toilet. How was it? Well, it's a pit toilet. It's not exciting. What? It's better than the woods. It's better or the than woods. The woods. the woods might be better, right? Start that rock slide. Okay, we'll get going. Three, two, one. Mountain starts sliding. What a view! Pit toilet with a view. Now we're traveling to the second in the eco region called Sub Alpine. This elevation is 1600 to 2100 meters above sea level. Now you can see the tree lines are kind of small. The highest in the eco region is called Alpine, where you can see the peak of the mountain mostly rock, snow, ice. Not so much in biodiversity in those areas. You can see small growing plants, lichens, and mosses. Weather here, we get a 60 to 150 kilometers per hour, top wind speed. At the glacier, you might feel minus 10, minus 15. I think everybody's ready for that. Kinda? Alright. It's just because of the catabatic wind that we're getting in this area. Catabatic means it's downhill yeah, from the valley. Down That's why it's called there. Yeah, we should. You can walk up to the... Color formation, if it is heavy enough, it falls to precipitation. Depending on the temperature, it could rain, snow, or even ice. I think the weather today is very good, so I'm going to enjoy the glacier. Now we're almost end of the five minutes so we're gonna move to the big bus called ice explorer Ooh. i call it monster bus <laughs> because of the big terra tires cool. so bring cool. your things with you i may not be your driver later on to pick you up so just enjoy your day here and your driver will be selena dion
actually not Filipino. My dad's Filipino. Yeah. Uh, what's it? Can I stop? Mabute, awesome. That's all I know, and I know the food. Uh, anyone else that I missed? Australians, Kiwis, uh, Africa, and Antarctica? Okay, we got everyone covered. Beautiful. Um, I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. It's about a five-hour drive northeast of here. It's very cold in Edmonton in the wintertime. Uh, this December, it was down to negative 45 degrees Celsius for a whole week. Uh, so definitely not super warm weather. In fact, they call Edmonton Deadmonton. That's its nickname because nothing grows there in the wintertime. It's dead. Also, we used to have the higher murder rates, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> So we're going to hop into some Glaciers 101 with you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to shout them out, raise your hand. I can also see all your faces in the mirror here, like Kevin's. Hi. So we'll start off with a question. Do you guys think that glacier ice is made like the ice in your freezer? Raise your hand if you think that. Oh my god, you guys are so smart. Good job. Glacier ice is not made like the ice in your freezer. It's made through a very special process called fernification. So fernification is basically the layering and compression of snow. In the wintertime, we need at least 10 meters, 30 feet of snowfall, to create glacier ice. And that snow, it will layer, and it will layer, and it will layer. It will compress down and squeeze on those bottom layers of snow, probably squeezing out most of the air inside of it. So after about five years of layering, compressing, squeezing down on those bottom layers of snow, we'll get pure solid glacier ice. Now, glacier ice is very dense, it has only about 10% air left inside of it, compared to the ice in your freezer, which has about 50% air. So actually, if you were to take a cube of glacier ice and drop it in a glass of water, it would sink to the bottom of the glass and so float. That's how dense it is. I'm looking ahead of us here. What's going on? Ooh. Seems like we're about to go down a very steep hill. Kevin, how are you feeling? Okay? Awesome. How's everyone else feeling? Very awesome. So we are about to go down the steepest unpaved commercial road in all of North America. Ooh. It's around a 32% grade. That's a 16 degree angle. We're going to go down here nice and slow, only about four kilometers an hour. So everyone, put up your hands in the air for me. For the slowest roller coaster ride ever! Woohoo! Now, Kevin, there is a bucket up front here if you need to use it, okay? Everyone else, your window's open, so you can set them open. It's also a good time to take pictures if you like to do that now. Now, if we look ahead of us here, you'll notice that the Athabasca Glacier is at a pretty low elevation. It's actually not even in the Alpine, and so it doesn't get that 10 meters of snowfall it needs in the winter time to make its own ice. So, how did it get there? It came from the Columbia Ice Field. So, if we look ahead of us here, you'll see kind of two steps of ice going up from the glacier. In fact, that second step of ice is where the Columbia Ice Field begins. Now, in order to be called a real ice field, it has to make enough ice for at least two outlet glaciers. Our Columbia Ice Field, it is the largest in the Canadian Rocky Mountains, and it makes enough ice for six outlet glaciers, triple qualified. Now, four of those glaciers are here in Alberta. The other two are in British Columbia. And so the ice field, it reaches out into two provinces, and it's around the same size as the city of Vancouver, or the island of Oahu in Hawaii. And the ice field, it gets a lot of snow in the winter time, and it makes a lot of extra ice. And that extra ice, it doesn't go all the way up, up, up into the clouds. It has to go somewhere eventually. So it gets pulled down in between the valleys, in, in between the, the mountains, sorry, into the valleys to create outlet glaciers like the Athabasca field. Alright, I'm going to need six very, very brave volunteers here for me. Six brave volunteers. Can you raise your hand? I got one, two, three, four, five, and six. You guys are going to hop out and wash my tires for me. 
There's six hires, one from each of you. Sound good? No? That's okay. I'll figure it out. We used to do that, but my camera will play for TripAdvisor reviews, so we had to stop. Instead, we created this big puddle here to wash off our tires. It's a very creative name. It's called the Tire Wash. Guess what it does? Washes the tires. Try to find a better name for it. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Now the reason why we want to wash off our tires before going on the glacier, one, so that they look very nice in all your Instagram and Facebook pictures. Uh, but two, so that we don't bring any dirt and rocks onto the glacier today. The reason why is because of something called the Alpedo effect. Has anyone heard of that before? No, that's okay. Even though you haven't heard of it before, you've actually all experienced it. I'm sure everyone here has made the mistake of wearing a black t-shirt on a hot summer day. You're going to feel way hotter than if you were to wear a white t-shirt, right? That's because those darker colors absorb more than the rainbow. All the other colors of light get absorbed, except for the blue, which bounces around the crystals of ice, which is how we see that awesome color. Now if you guys look to your left, you'll kind of see a point in the glacier where the ice starts to dip down. Now that is something called a crevasse, one of the many hazards we can find on the glacier. Crevasses are big holes that go deep inside the ice, as deep as 200 meters. It's around 600 feet. You do not want to fall inside a crevasse. If it is deeper than about 50 meters and you fall inside, Hugs Canada will not even bother trying to rescue you. They know you are toast. That is why we have boundary signs all along the glacier here. Please do not go past the red boundary signs or past little streams of water. We don't want anyone falling into the moss and the last time someone did that, they uh, actually, uh, the last time someone crossed a boundary sign, sorry, was, um, they broke their legs, so please guys do not go past those other signs. Thank you, Mr. It feels comfortable. It's very comfortable. So for sure it'd be really freezing. Mm -hmm. I have a glacier rock. Look at that little big slushy. Oh look at this chunk of ice. You shouldn't be walking on it. Yeah. Maybe get you on more slushy. Little tiny rod. Let me find bigger I guess you could just eat those. It could be tiny. Like bring, some, some, bring them back to your friends or something. My like that almost looks like a shark's tooth there. Oh, 
It's so cool to be able to walk around. That's cool. I'd keep them. Should be fine. Give a couple or I mean... Oh, this looks slippery. Yeah, I know. It's a caveman. Booga, booga, I need that. How you doing? How you doing with the brightness, baby? Perfect. Good. Oh, no! Do I want to 
might just pick that up and take pictures. A big oh, truck. yeah, it would be cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here, I'll hold it. I'll hold it for you. Yay! Look at this melting yeah, ice. Yeah, it is melting. Oh. Poor thing. I believe I Busted. Nice. Oh, yeah. 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 Cleared out pretty quick here. I want a rock. I want to find a rock. Slippery sliding. You're scared, that lady. She thought you were falling. <laughs> Slippery sliding.
has good stickers I never even knew. She's right here. Better than the dollar store I wish I had home. It's quite a steep road there. Alright. Hello, how is the glacier everyone? Great, one person liked it, okay. Everyone liked the glacier, yeah? It was good? Awesome. Kevin liked it, he's doing this. Now, let's see, did anyone drink the glacier water? Anyone drink some glacier water? Yeah, how was it? Perfect. You know that the glacier water actually makes you like 10 years younger if you drink it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. I drink it every day and I'm 85 years old as to why the glacier is losing ice. Climbing. Any guesses? Global warming. Global warming. Anyone else? Wrong. Well, it's not global warming. It's because we're not sacrificing people to the glacier anymore. Yeah. Now, at the beginning of the tour, we had a lovely volunteer. Oh. Hi, Kevin. Hey. Do you want to save the glacier today? Yeah? Awesome. So we're going to sacrifice Kevin to the glacier again. Thank you, Kevin. Bye-bye, Kevin. I'm kidding, guys. Don't worry. We're not sacrificing Kevin today. Everyone loves Kevin. Kevin's That's like what we say. You guys got it right the first time, of course. Woo! Climate change is the reason why our glaciers are melting. In fact, every single glacier in the world is currently losing ice. Now, because of human activity, we've kind of created a huge blanket of pollution surrounding planet Earth. And like a blanket, it is warming up our planet. So because of this, our global temperature has gone up by one degree Celsius in the last 100 years. Everyone knows the story. Um, but what some people don't get is that one degree is a really, really big deal. It doesn't seem like it, but it's the difference between melting and freezing. The difference between negative 0.5 degrees Celsius and plus 0.5 degrees Celsius, which is a big deal of ice. And so, because of this, the glaciers are melting. The alpha bound glaciers from disappearing, while as individuals we're not making the most pollution, it's that top 1% of companies, uh, but education is still a very big tool that we can use to fight climate change. There's a lot of misinformation going on around the world about it, and it's a really scary and complicated topic. So by having kind and co uh, compassionate conversations with people who don't know any better, the more likely they will be to change their minds. All right, that's it guys. No more climate change. The tour is only going up from here. Uh, awesome. So if you guys look to your left hand side, you'll see a little lake at the toe of the glacier. That little lake, it was not there until the 1950s. But due to all the melt of the glacier, it started to form. Now that little lake there, you might notice it kind of has a weird color. It's almost a little turquoisey in some spots. That's because of something called rock flower. Have we heard of rock flower before? Yeah, a few of you. For those of you who haven't, real quick, it's created by the movement of the glacier. As the glacier moves forward, grinds up the rocks underneath it, turns it into a very fine powder, and that is rock flower. When it settles in the glacier lakes, it bounces around the blue light, kind of like that glacier ice does, which is how we see that lovely color. Now, what you might not know about rock flower is that it is actually a natural laxative. 
Uh, yeah. So if you drink the water from that little lake at the bottom of the glacier, you will experience Athabasca's Revenge and be sitting on the toilet for three days straight. Oh my Not fun. So if you drink any water that's blue, it will. I love my, my, my kids uh, feeling all the time without something too much, but I love it. <laughs> Is it a bird or a moth? Oh, I believe I can. Maybe jump off. Maybe you climbed up to this and jump straight off. Only that was a real live goat. What is actually wrong with his eyes? It's sad. <laughs> Everything is wrong it's with sad his goat. eyes. Feed him up, boy. It's a mountain goat. Feed up the goat. See my goats. That's not the best view there. It's a baby goat. Just a baby. Oh. <laughs> I just see one. It's an obvious baby. From now I can see. There's actually two. You see another baby? Yes, they are the Just Look at this one walking this way. She's got fluffy legs. They got fluffy legs. Oh, I'm glad Daddy got to see the goat. <laughs> Just a goat. Oh, well, that's a okay. You don't goat. see these in Florida, honey. These guys are just gonna go up the mountain. Uh -huh. What's going on? One's peeing. See if it goes up on. Oh, look at this one coming down. He said, hey guys, I'm gonna come join you for some snacks. <laughs> oh. oh, fight. <laughs> They're not fighting. Well, that one just.
just shove the other one off. Uh. Also, why does their fur look so disgusting? I try to cool it off. Give it water. Give it something. It's amazing how well they blend in with that. Oh, Must be like head. a salt lake or something. Maybe. They definitely eat that. Those cultures. Never seen all the way up here. Yeah, if we only had the grizzly up here. Oh my god, you can't see it. Just walk back. Back over that way. I was like, if there is a grizzly, <laughs> there is one back there. <laughs>